Good Friday, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Conversation Daily News. Glad you all could be with us. Well, we made it to the end of another week. Of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Friday. I have a message from my book, Words I Choose to Live By, and in today's entertainment spotlight, you guys have been part of my conversation with musician Andre Ward. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Friday headlines. In national news, U.S. says China balloon could collect intelligence signals. The China balloon shot down by the U.S. was equipped to detect and collect intelligence signals as part of a huge military link aerial surveillance program that targeted more than 40 countries. The Biden administration declared on Thursday, citing imagery from American UT spy planes. A fleet of balloons operates under the direction of the People's Liberation Army and is used for spying, outfitted with high-tech equipment designed to gather sensitive information from targets around the globe, the U.S. said. Similar balloons have sailed over five continents, according to the administration. A statement from a senior State Department official offered the most detailed to date linking China's military to the balloon that was shot down by the U.S. last weekend over the Atlantic Ocean. The public details outline the program's scope and capabilities were meant to refute China's persistent denials that the balloon was used for spying, including a claim Thursday the U.S. accusations about the balloon amount to information warfare. On Capitol Hill, the House voted unanimously to condemn China for a brazen violation of U.S. sovereignty and efforts to deceive the international community through false claims about its intelligence collection campaigns. Republicans have criticized President Joe Biden for not acting sooner to down the balloon, but both parties' lawmakers came together on the vote 419 to 0. In Beijing, before the U.S. offered its new information, the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson repeated her nation's insistence that the large unmanned balloon was a civilian airship that had blown off course and that the U.S. had overreacted by shooting it down. In more national news, writer who menaced officer with Confederate flag gets prison. A Delaware man who threatened a black police officer with a pole attached to a Confederate battle flag as he stormed the U.S. Capitol was sentenced on Thursday to three years in prison. Kevin Seyfried, 53, tearfully apologized for his participation in the January 6, 2021 riot before the U.S. District Judge. I never wanted to send a message of hate, he said. The judge said it was deeply troubling that Seyfried wielded the flagpole as a weapon against the officer. Bringing a Confederate flag into one of our nation's most sacred halls was outrageous, the judge said. The judge allowed Seyfried to remain free until he must report to prison at a date to be determined. The Justice Department prosecutors have recommended a prison sentence of five years and ten months for Seyfried, a drywall mechanic from Delaware. Seyfried and his adult son Hunter stormed the Capitol together after attending the Stop the Steal rally where then-President Donald Trump addressed thousands of supporters in Washington. Kevin Seyfried was the 12th rioter to set foot inside the building that day, according to prosecutors. In October, his son was sentenced to two years imprisonment. In more national news, Senator John Fetterman hospitalized after feeling lightheaded. Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman, who had a stroke during his campaign last year, has been hospitalized after feeling lightheaded while attending a Democrat retreat, his office said. Initial tests at George Washington University Hospital did not show evidence of a new stroke, Fetterman's communications director said in a statement Wednesday night. The senator remained at the hospital for observation as doctors conducted more tests. He is in good spirits and talking with his staff and family. We will provide more information when we have it, says his communication director. In November, Fetterman, 53, won the seat held by now-retired Republican Pat Toomey after a hard-fought contest against GOP nominee Mehmet Oz. Fetterman, who was a lieutenant governor, defeated the celebrity heart surgeon by five percentage points, flipping a seat that was key to Democrats holding the Senate majority. In entertainment news, at Super Bowl, Cheryl Lee Rapp seeks to lift every voice. Cheryl Lee Rapp is living a career dream. The Abbott Elementary star won her first Emmy last year and will lend her powerful vocals as a Super Bowl pregame performer this weekend. With all her success, the veteran actor-singer only wishes her late parents were here to witness her recent accomplishments. I wish that my parents were still alive to see it and experience it with me, Rapp said in a recent interview while promoting the Microband 24 sanitizing spray. Her father was a college professor, while her mother was a renowned Jamaican fashion designer. My parents always believed in me and my success, she continued. I know this would have been something they would have loved to be a part of, 
I do miss them, she said. And finally, in business news, Wall Street sinks as early rally fizzles amid higher yields. Stocks dropped Thursday following another mixed set of profit reports from companies as rising expectations for interest rates keep up the pressure on Wall Street. The S&P 500 fell 0.9%, but the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 249 points, or 0.7%, and the Nasdaq Composite sank 1%. All three indexes had been up close to 1% in the morning before momentum gave out. Stocks have been shaky this week, says the Associated Press, flipping from gains to losses and back again amid uncertainty about where interest rates and inflation are headed. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for a message from my book, Words I Choose to Live By. Enjoy. Good Friday, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Words I Choose to Live By. Always keep this in mind. No one can live your life better than you. So today, let's get about living it to the fullest. Have an amazing Friday and enjoy your weekend. We are part of my conversation coming up with musician Andre Ward in today's Entertainment Spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Severus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Musician Andre Ward joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about his love of music and musical journey. Here's a bit of our conversation. And Andre, thank you so much for the time today. Really do appreciate you stopping by. No, but well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, very exciting um, to be here, and so I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I want to talk about your own love of music. As I mentioned in my introduction, Andre, as you know, uh, music does have this way of, of uniting us. It breaks down a lot of barriers. When did you first realize the power of music for yourself? Well, you know, music is a universal language. And, you know, it is that connection, uh, whether it be spiritual, emotional, um, that really connection of what's going on in one's life. Um, and so as a musician, you know, my approach has always been how can I connect to listeners, the audience, through my music, because that's really my voice, because uh, music is that universal language. I was fortunate enough to uh, grow up in uh, Chicago, and at that time, the, there was a thriving uh, music program uh, within the public school system. Uh, but there was also an after-school program, which I think is so important because it gives another... Not only was there now more time to continue to work on the craft, uh, to stay engaged, but it gives opportunity for, um, for young uh, people to have something else to kind of do after school. And it was during that time where, you know, I, I started I started with the, the uh, snare drum, then I went to the trumpet, but it was really when I had the opportunity to pick up the saxophone, where I just kind of felt that connection, and then I said, you know what, this is me. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning to this edition of Conversations Daily News. Before we go to Monday with more news, message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By, and of course, your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daddy News today. Now let's go make the day amazing. Take care.